I am awake way earlier than I would like to be, and that's because I have a five and a half hour drive ahead of me. I am getting out of Orange County, getting away from all of its people, because I've had it up to here with crowds, and I need to get out into some open air, get a little bit of space. So I'm on my way to Arizona, and I'm going to Arizona specifically because I've had an itch lately, a red inflamed irritated itch and the only thing that will scratch that itch is photographing some saguaro cactuses saguaro that's s-a-w-a-r-o you know what saguaro cactuses are don't you that's these ones you might say i've had a fever and the only prescription is photographing some saguaro cactuses yeah, basically, I've, uh, I've had a hankering to shoot some saguaros. So, um, if you want to shoot saguaros, you go to the Sonoran Desert. Not the Mojave Desert, not the Colorado Desert, but the Sonoran Desert. So, that's why I'm going to Arizona. The route I'm taking is south to basically go parallel along the Mexican border, um, which should be interesting. I've never taken that route to Arizona before, so at least it'll be some new scenery. And uh, when I go along the Mexican border, I'll say, hola, buenos dias, and uh, continue on my way to Arizona. But I better settle in, because I got some serious driving ahead of me. As with most of my camping trips, I specifically sought out land managed by the Bureau of Land Management. BLM land is public land, but unlike a national park, it's a lot less regulated and it's essentially completely undeveloped. At a national park, you're going to find parking lots, bathrooms, developed campsites with a nightly fee, but BLM land is different. It's true wilderness. Now, the lack of facilities can scare some people off, but that's exactly why I like going to BLM land. It really weeds out the dilettantes and thins out the crowds. Well, I finally found a campsite. It took me basically all day. Um, the spot I originally planned on going to, I found was not accessible uh, or wasn't gonna have the views I wanted. So I had to come up with a plan B and that took a while. So I'm in a new location, still in the Sonoran Desert, but a very different spot than I originally planned. The light is fading quick and I wanna take pictures because it's beautiful. Um, I would like to do four by five or six by 17, but it's gonna be too slow. So I'm breaking out old reliable. The RZ67. Now I just gotta decide if I wanna shoot six by six or six by seven. Let's do six by seven. Now on this trip, I did not bring any Fuji Velvia. I am trying to limit myself in film so that I'm not faced with too many options when I come out. Because if I have too many options, I end up um, spreading myself a little thin and then I can't make up my mind later. So I'm loading up some Portra 160, which after my last trip, I think I am thoroughly in love with this film. ISO 400 would have been smarter. Oh well, too late. Because I will be shooting handheld. All right, let's see what we can find. Really not being as careful with composition as I'd like to be, but time is of the essence. This light won't last forever. So I'm shooting all these pictures handheld, obviously. My aperture is f4, and my shutter's at 1250. And 
And I've been asked, can this Mamiya RZ67 really be shot handheld without a tripod? The answer is yes, definitely. As long as your shutter speed's fast enough, so faster than your focal length, um, and you're real careful with your focus. That's it. And you got a steady hand. Shouldn't hurt either. Now I shot most of these pictures with my 110 millimeter f2.8 lens, which as I've said before is one of my favorite lenses. It's compact, it's super sharp, and the wide 2.8 aperture is really nice. But I did shoot a few of these with my 360 millimeter, just to get a little more compression. Kodak Portra, as always, delivered some delightful colors. I swear the more I use Kodak Portra, the more I want to use Kodak Portra. It's just a beautiful film. I did not quite finish that roll, but uh, I'm packing it in because that is not the way to take pictures. It was way too fast, way too sloppy, and I don't like it. So I'm hoping tomorrow I can uh, slow down a bit and I uh, really take my time and actually think about my compositions more um, and be a real photographer. So I'm gonna pack this up. I gotta set up camp. I gotta get all my stuff together. I never had lunch today. <sighs> Hopefully tomorrow I feel a little more rested and I can concentrate on my compositions a little better. Well, I finally got some food in me, so I'm feeling uh, quite a bit better. Given that it's only 6.30, sure as heck I ain't just gonna go to sleep right now. So I'm gonna go do some nighttime pictures. And um, I'm not even that into nighttime photography. Never really got into it. Don't know why. I see some really cool, cool nighttime photos, but just never grabbed me. But it'll be something to do. And I'm going to be doing digital for this. I brought my Canon uh, 6D uh, just because nighttime photography is much easier with digital. What can I say? Uh, maybe tomorrow night I might do some uh, Star Trail stuff with one of my view cameras. But it's too dark now to set up one of my view cameras. I won't be able to compose the shot or focus or anything like that. So, time to break out the digital and do some nighttime stuff. It's a quarter moon tonight, which means there aren't as many stars as I would like. But that's okay. I think I can still do some uh, fun stuff with the moonlit landscape. And I brought a flash with me with some colored gels. So I'm going to try popping some color on some of these cactus. See if I can do something a little more creative than just the standard uh, nighttime shot. Okay, so I was just about to set down my camera and I looked off into the distance with my headlamp and I saw something glowing out there. And I thought maybe it was a reflector off of a post or something, but then it blinked. So I'm hoping I can see it here. There, there it is, there it is. There. Show me. Got two little eyes. Of course, now that I got the camera out, it's not happening. Oh shit, there it is, there it is. Come on, focus. Right there, right there. Come on, focus. Right there, right there. Oh, this is creepy. There's like Blair Witch. Nah, I'm just kidding. Probably just a coyote. All right, let's take some pictures. Okay, I think I found a composition I like. It's always a little hard to tell in the dark like this. Let's see what we can do. First thing I like to do when I'm doing nighttime photography is to drop the LCD screen brightness way down. Otherwise it'll burn out your retinas. All right, now composing it, this is the tricky part. Be a little bit of a guess. Now check it and guess again. Check it again. I'm using my flashlight to illuminate the cactus so I can get an idea where they are. All right, can keep the aperture somewhat wide. 
I'm going to use F, uh, do 6.3. It's basically is just a guessing game because I don't do nighttime photography enough to uh, have some settings in mind already. But I'm just going to put in ISO 25,600 at, what the hell, five seconds. And then we'll just work it backwards from there if I need to go brighter or not. Let's try this. Yeah, pretty close actually. <laughs> Got to tweak the composition a little bit to the right. All right, now I don't want to use ISO 25,600 just because of the noise, so I'm going to drop it. Let's do it two stops to 6,400, and then I'll have to lengthen my shutter two stops. For the photo geeks out there, the settings were ISO 6400, f6.3 at 20 seconds. And I'm going to try it with uh, popping a little bit of flash at the, at the cactus here. But I have to pick a color. What color gel do I want to use? Let's see, maybe we got like a purple or something. Oh yeah, let's try that one. And then again, I'm just going to have to kind of guess at what power to use on the flash. And then I'll pop it onto the, um, the cactus there just by hitting the test button. Let's put it on manual. Let's start with maybe, it's an ISO 6400, so it shouldn't have to be really high power. Let's try 164th power. Try it. When you're doing a long exposure like this on a non-moving subject, you can actually fire the flash at any point during the exposure. Not only that, you can fire the flash multiple times during the same exposure, and it has the same effect as increasing the power of the flash. Didn't look like anything. I'm gonna raise the power of this. I'll do one quarter power. And then what I'm gonna do here is just pop it twice. Put another gel on it. Make it a little more colorful. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of trial and error. But my ultimate goal is to pop some like pinkish purple color on this front cactus and then a bluish tone on the back cactus. So I'm gonna have to switch gels, uh, which means I kind of want to make my exposure longer. So I have time to do that. 13 seconds should be good. I'll lower the ISO just a bit. All right, here we go. Ah, I gotta be faster than that. I gotta go, I gotta go over there. That's better way to do it. Yeah, that's the stuff. Pretty fun. I ended up using ISO 2000 at f6.3 at 25 seconds, and then I decided to play with some blue and teal tones on a different set of cactus. Okay, so I have a new composition here, a horizontal. I'm gonna try the impossible. I'm gonna do four gels, four different color gels on four different cactuses here. Um, so I'm gonna be running and hustling. Uh, it's gonna be tough, but I'm gonna make it happen. Should be fun. 
Okay, here goes nothing. First off, let me apologize for the video going out of focus here. This is my first time using the night vision function on my video camera, and I'm still figuring out the best way to focus in night vision mode. You'll notice that during this exposure, I ended up running through my own picture several times. And you may be wondering why I don't show up in the resulting picture. Well, the cool thing about doing long exposures in the middle of the night like this is as long as you're not giving off your own light, you can run through your own picture and you won't even show up. Now, if you have a headlamp on or you're carrying a flashlight or something like that, then yeah, you'll leave a trail. But if you just run through your picture and not giving off any light, you'll just disappear. Completely guessing at how many pops to do on each of these. I'm blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's pretty sick. Well, as you can tell from my reaction, I was pretty happy with this shot. It took a lot of trial and error to get this dialed in, but man, once I worked out all the kinks, sure felt good to get it right. Ooh, man. Fun stuff, and now I'm sweating. <laughs> okay, well I am all nighttime photographied out, I think. Um, plus, I think I permanently damaged my vision blinding myself with that flash all night. But that's okay, it was fun. Um, I would love to do some star trail photography on a film camera tonight, but it just can't be done because the moon, uh, I think the moon sets at like 3 a.m., but I have no intention of getting up that early for that. So I think I'm just gonna turn in, read my Kindle a little bit, get some sleep, cause I did not sleep well last night. All right, now before I hit the sack um, and then go to bed, <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, before I hit the sack, I thought I'd give you a little tour of where I'm living, uh, show you how I camp. Uh, first off, I'll start on the deck, on the, the spacious patio. Uh, I, I put this mat out in front of my tent every time I go camping. It's really cool. Uh, the sand can sift through it, but things don't really come up underneath it. Um, and it's pretty lightweight and just stakes in with four stakes, but it's made by uh, Sea Gear and uh, I really like this thing. But let's, uh, let's head on into the uh, spacious tent. And this tent, by the way, uh, this is made by Kodiak Canvas. And this is the Flexbow Deluxe Tent. I got the nine foot by eight foot. And um, man, I love this tent. Uh, it's so rad. It's super strong, holds up in the wind like you wouldn't believe. Uh, it's waterproof. And the best part about it, I'm six foot two and I can stand up fully inside. So I don't have to crouch over to put on clothes and all that. Um, but this thing is tough. I mean, it will last a lifetime. So uh, I can't speak highly enough of the Kodiak canvas tents. They're not cheap, they're not lightweight, they're not compact but man, they make camping a lot more comfortable. But let's head inside. Uh, switch out of infrared here. Okay. Welcome to my hum humble abode. Let's take a look around. We'll start in the library. There's my library. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh. All right, here's the kitchen. I am very lazy when it comes to cooking while I'm camping. Uh, I don't do a full Coleman stove and I'm not making up sausage and bacon and all that stuff because I hate cleaning up. Um, cleaning up dishes when you're camping is just a royal pain in the ass. So uh, I do a backpacker stove and backpacker food. Um, just these uh, pouches of food here, they taste way better than you would think. Um, they're actually quite delicious. So it's super easy, just add hot water, add boiling water, and then, um, you know, throw the whole thing away when you're done. It keeps the dishes to a minimum. There's my closet and uh, extra storage. And you know, in a tiny place like this, you can't have enough storage, right? Okay, uh, there's a the bedroom. I do a cot instead of a blow-up mattress. I actually do a combo is a blow-up mattress on the cot. 
Uh, and I do that for a couple reasons. Um, number one is I went camping once with a blow up mattress as I always did for years. And uh, it turned out it had a hole in it. I didn't know that till I got there. So I ended up sleeping, well, barely sleeping, on the very cold ground with no padding. So decided to get a cot. It's a little more fail safe. They don't break as easy. And um, you know, I also like that you can sit on it uh, up off the ground. You sleep up off the ground so it's a little bit warmer and it gives you that extra storage underneath. Down here, I have my buddy heater and it is attached to a hose that goes to a full size propane tank outside. One of the nice things about this tent is you can uh, run a hose or a cord into it without leaving the door open. But this buddy heater, uh, portable buddy heater by Mr. Heater, technically. This is one of the best investments I've ever made for camping. Um, I went camping once in Mojave with my brothers and uh, it was in the winter time and we were so frozen we just we couldn't sleep all night. We could not get warm enough. It was miserable. So then the next year I decided to bring one of these. The next year I went to Mojave. Uh, I had this thing running all night. I woke up because I was too hot. It's like a sweat lodge in my tent here. And uh, I had a thermometer inside. It was 82 degrees in here. And then when I went out to go to the bathroom, it was 26 degrees outside. So yeah, it works pretty well. I highly recommend it. But uh, yeah, there it is. There's my palace. If this was an episode of MTV Cribs, I think this is where I would tell you to get off my property or something like that. Uh, and then the camera would pull back. So it'd be like, go on, get out of here. Go on, get. But uh, this isn't MTV Cribs. All right, well, I'm going to take pictures in the morning, not at sunrise, because I don't really need sunrise pictures, but I, I wanna get some morning light. Um, hopefully I'm gonna shoot some six by 17 in the morning, maybe some four by five. But um, overall, today was just about getting here, setting up, the nighttime pictures were a bonus. And uh, now I'm going to crawl into this guy here get all nice and cozy, and uh, hopefully pass out pretty quick. But until tomorrow. Be sure to check out part two of this video series for more fun in the Sonoran Desert.